Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show and happy Halloween. Uh, we're here with uh, Chief Vaping Silence. And he is the chief. And he's a, uh, Ben is actually dressed as a, as a, as a proud Indian chief uh, who was very pro-colonist. <laughs> and there are, we, this is not written about, but many of the... Uh, Indian chiefs love the colonists, and um, Ben is, is dressed up after that chief who said our way of life is valid, however, <laughs> progress is what it is, and, you know, and he, he started the, uh, it, it, it's uh, the Native Americ exit, the Native Americ's exit. The Native Americ ex exit. The Native Americ were like Blexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candace Owens, you did Blexit, so you did Native mm -hmm. Amer. It's hard. It's very difficult. This is just something that we didn't use for a sketch. We bought it. We had it. I threw it on. Is everyone ready for election day? <laughs> it's election day in America. Board up the stores and get a gun. Board up the stores and get a gun. It's a healthy democracy. We've boarded up all the stores. <laughs> all the glass that can be smashed is now behind wood. That's how you know we're doing good. Walmart has stopped selling guns and ammunition, <laughs> but they're still selling liquor. Just booze it up. Trump or Biden, booze it up. Have SpaghettiOs, booze it up. Don't ask about your job. Don't ask about your health insurance. Don't ask why your kids are on drugs. Don't ask about the vaccine. Just put the needle in your ass. Don't question us and we won't have to kill you or make things so bad that you kill yourself. <laughs> what a week. I did one of the biggest podcasts ever recorded and I sat next, love him or hate him, I sat one, next to one of the most fascinating people ever. Little Zen. <laughs> and and that was such an, a meaningful event in my life to be part of that podcast. Mm -hmm. To sit there and 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 do some time with a thinker. I am I am, of course, being silly. The podcast I'm talking about was the one with Joe Rogan and Alex Jones, maybe one of the best podcasts ever recorded. Mm -hmm. Not because of me, I was funny, but what a great podcast of course love or hate Alex Jones he's the most entertaining person on the planet um in terms of skill as a broadcaster he it's beyond anything I've ever seen up close in person it's truly amazing and I I, I had some really good funny moments and and Joe did a great job because everyone's mad at the fact checking it's like Joe's got to do that because that's what makes a good listening experience mm -hmm even though some of you are angry at it, and I get, I understand what you're saying, but when Joe's like, let's slow down and look at these things, and Alex ends up getting proven right. Right. That's literally what differentiates that podcast from something where you let Alex rant, and then the people go, well, fuck that, it's all wrong. Can't say that about this podcast because we have the receipts, and Joe was like going through every story with him, so that was... That was really interesting to do, and um, I'm happy I did it. And then I'm back uh, with Joe and Kyle Kuklinski for the election special on November 2nd. Election Day. A lot of people have already voted. More than half of the country uh, has already voted or something like that. I say, could that be a real statistic? Who are these people doing early voting? I think a, a large percentage of the electorate has already cast a ballot. It's shocking to me. So more than 80 million Americans, it looks like? Have more than 80 million Americans have already voted mm -hmm. in the presidential election, and 50 million of those people have boarded up their homes. And isn't that nice? I'm telling you this. What a really, I mean, could anything be more of an omen 
for this country than Walmart stopped. They, they had to stop selling guns out of fear of what's coming. Could anything be more perfect than Walmart saying, you can't come on down here to get socks and ammunition. You got to relax. Walmart returns, returns guns and ammo to store floors saying civil unrest was isolated. Oh. So they did it for like two days and then oh, put it back? Oh, they're back. They're back. <laughs> sure. What am I saying? Thank the Lord. Walmart on Friday said it's returning guns and ammunition to store floors. Describing incidents of what the retailer called civil unrest in several of its stores earlier this week as isolated. Hey, that's only a few cities. Only a few of our locations have been completely destroyed. Get the guns back out. I like that attitude. Hey, get the guns out. What are you doing? Some, you know some guy walked into Walmart. Yeah. There's like a bunch of people carrying crates of ammunition. Some manager goes, hey, what the fuck's going on? Didn't you hear? We got word from up top. Get the bullets back out on the shelves. They go, well, I just spoke to someone in, in the Philadelphia store who just got stamped to death. They said, hey, isolated incident, dummy. Haven't you heard? That person had children that got trampled to death. It's isolated. We don't expect it to happen here. So put the guns back out next to the waffle irons and everybody get ready. Major cities are boarding up their storefronts just in case people have a little fun on election day major preparation is underway for boarded up windows and increased security retailers brace for the election there's where is that rodeo drive oh yeah it is that's yeah. rodeo drive in sunny california Nordstrom, the high-end department store chain, said it planned to board up some of its 350 stores and hire extra security for Election Day. Tiffany & Company, the luxury jeweler, said that windows of select stores in key cities will be boarded up in anticipation of potential election-related activity. Isn't that a fun way to say it? Well, there is potential election-related activity that could look like bricks through our windows. <laughs> In Beverly Hills, the police said they would take a proactive approach and close Rodeo Drive, a renowned strip of luxury retailers on Tuesday and Wednesday, citing the likelihood of protest activity, quote, quote, unquote, <laughs> protest activity. The police working with private security companies, CIA, Mossad, MI6, <laughs> Said they would also be on full alert throughout Beverly Hills starting on Halloween and continuing. To, what is Halloween going to be this year? What is it going to be? We've got socially distanced trick or treating. What are you going to be doing? How are you going to do this? Are, are, what are the guidelines? What is, because COVID's back, baby. I don't know if you know this, but COVID's back. We're going to have to reschedule some of our comedy shows. My fans are going to get mad at me. Here's why we're going to have to do that. I don't know which ones yet. Here's why. Comedy is fun when they let people in the building. You see? It's kind of a requirement. When they decrease the amount of people you can have in by hundreds of people, you go, this isn't fun. I want to come back when we're big and we can do it big. We've had great shows in Dallas and Fort Worth and Nashville and West Palm and Tampa. Phenomenal shows. San Antonio. And those rooms have been packed. I mean, they've been COVID festivals. Nobody's got a mask. I mean, it's been the good old days, you know? The good old days of, uh, you know, me going up there, killing for an hour, and the people on YouTube going, I don't, whatever. <laughs> and the good old days. But it's been great. Dan's opening for me has been killing We've been having an amazing time. We can't do the meet and greets after people get mad at me. They get angry. They're like, stop that. Why are you not? And I can't because then the, the rats, and there are rats, they find these photos and go, he's doing meet and greets. Mm. Close this club down because they're miserable people. So I'm trying to protect the interests of the club and myself. I don't want to get sick. More importantly, I don't want a fan getting sick. I don't want, and I don't want the club having to deal with bad press and bullshit these places have not been open. They're trying to make fucking money. But the problem with a lot of these uh, things now is that the cases are spiking. So the clubs are coming back and going, okay, we're getting all these increased regulations 
and we're going to have to do a certain percentage of people. That to me is not fun. I'd rather wait a month or two and go back out on the road. It was my rationale in the beginning. I want comedy to be fun for everyone involved. We've got 90,000 Corona cases in 24 hours for the first time, which is a record. It's a resurgence of COVID-19. COVID-19 is back. <laughs> COVID is back, baby. You just see Bill and Melinda Gates like, yeah. somebody's watching me. <laughs> you know, it's like 90,000 cases, just yeah. them and Fauci just <laughs> dancing in one of his nine mansions. You know, like 90,000, baby. It's back, baby. With a vet. Now, I don't know what this thing is. I don't know if I've had it. I've had it for 10 years. I'm going to get it. I'm going to die. I don't know what it is. I've been exposed to it. Probably I've been out. We've been out. I've been in clubs. We've been pa- I mean, planes, we've been yeah. careful. I've been in planes. I put on masks. I don't even know anymore. I, no one knows. It's just back and it's big. It's bigger than ever. It's COVID two. It's a summer blockbuster. COVID is back. That's right. Just in time for the holidays. It would be like a movie, you know, just in time for the holidays. COVID is back and better than ever. National Lampoon's COVID Christmas. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just saying we're, we're going to have to move some of these dates to the, under, the other end of whatever this is. Hopefully it's February, March. We can kind of get into those markets and, and, and play to rooms full of people. Not... A hundred people socially distanced in a room of 400. That to me is not fun. And, it, you know, and I, I love everybody that buy tickets. It's fucking, we've had an amazing time. West Palm Beach was some of the most fun I've had doing stand up. I mean, drunk, monstrous crowds, horrible people like myself. That's when I know I'm having fun. When I go look in the audience and I go, these are bad people. And that's why they enjoy me because I'm a bad person. And it works. Sometimes I look at a crowd and I go, ah, they're not going to want to laugh. West Palm's great. The ocean, the mansions, the human trafficking. In the middle of one of the shows, I'm shitting on Ghislaine Maxwell. She stood up and started a wave (laughs) and the whole room did it. That's the type of shit I want. That's the type of fun I want, you know? Are kids allowed to trick or treat? Bring something up about that. Are Are they allowed? If a kid shows up at my house trick or treating, I am going to sit that youngster down and tell them about civic duty and say, what is wrong with you? Don't you know 0.00001% of people die of this? So we're on the CDC's website. We're on the CDC's website. Here we go. Steps to take when trick-or-treating. Avoid direct contact with trick-or-treaters. So if your son sees his friend, make sure they go nowhere near each other. Trick-or-treating should be an isolated activity. (laughs) It should be isolated and scary. Give give out treats outdoors if possible. Isn't that always how it's been? Right. Who's trick-or-treating? You? What pedophile is going, <laughs> you want candy? Come on in the living room. Isn't it always an outdoor thing? Isn't it always a doorstep thing? Yeah, it always is, yeah. What weird Epstein type is going, the real candy's in the kitchen? Set up a station with individually bagged treats for kids to take. Okay, that always works out well. Some fatty goes and steals them all. Wash hands before handing treats and finally wear a mask. Well, it's Halloween. That shouldn't be that hard. Make your cloth mask part of your costume. Fun. Fun. A costume mask is not a substitute for a cloth mask. Masks should not be worn by children under the age of two or anyone who has trouble breathing. Wait a minute. (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. We're going to let a bunch of one-year-olds not be masked up? I think not. Stay at least six feet away from others who do not live with you. Yeah, most people don't live with you. Use, bring hand sanitizer with you and use it after touching objects or other people. Parents, supervise young children using hand sanitizer. How great would it be if a bunch of young hooligans went out and instead of toilet papering cars and throwing eggs this year, just started blasting hand sanitizer all over things? How about this year, instead of toilet paper, you just see masks 
hanging from trees and houses. Remember that? Did you ever get into trouble on Halloween, All Hallows' yeah, Eve? Yeah, TPing. TPing, where you throw the, the, the toilet paper rolls over and the And that trees. was a real, because your family didn't have a lot of that. So that was a real <laughs> thing for you to do. Yeah. Can you take that off now? We've yeah. had fun with the costumes, please. It's bothering me. Can you take this off? What are you, you wore that too? What are you, in full regalia here? You got excited about the costume. For the love of God. My culture is not your costume. Don't disrespect the Mayans who used to sacrifice children on a mountain. The Mayans didn't dress like that. I know what's going on, folks. I'm incredibly intelligent. Many people are shocked by that. I, I used to, I remember eighth grade, I, I said, this is a time to be cool. There are times in your life when you should be cool. Many of you have never been cool. How sad is that? Being cool is destroying property, like Antifa. If, if I was a kid right now, I'd be an Antifa because it's cool. That's what I'd be. You know? I'd be in, I'd be in a, like, fat Antifa, which is the saddest Antifa. Where it's like you're, you're like, heavily breathing. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is really getting in the riding. You're kind of in the back, mm -hmm. you know? You just have a lot of fun things to say about Karl Marx, but like, dude, you weren't even there. You're like, I, I was there. Dude, you didn't even do anything. We all got arrested. You didn't even run up the hill. You sat down. You sat down in all black. No. I would provide the intellectual fire. Me and Ray Comp are going to do a great sketch called Fat Antifa, mm -hmm. where it's two guys that were on their way to Charlottesville to fight the right wing people, but they kept getting distracted by fast food restaurants. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and they kept eating. And then eventually they were just beaten to a bloody pulp by a female Trump supporter in like a golden corral parking lot. We never did it. But I remember in eighth grade, it was like, it's time to be cool. So the cool guys at my school, they had names like Johnny and Alfred. We went to fucking be cool and throw eggs and hang out in the park and shaving cream things. And that was cool. And I wish that for all of you. I hope you have a journey that involves a, a night like that where you can be cool and hang out with people like Johnny and Alfred and throw eggs and do shaving cream. And then I went to my, I, I, after that night, I went, at the end of that night, when my dad was eating dinner at a steakhouse, the steakhouse in the town I grew up in, and I came and I smelled like shaving cream, but I said it was cologne. And my father's friend who owned the steakhouse was like, ah, you got the cologne on for the girls. I was like, yep, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Little do you know, I've been sucking dick in the bushes. I was not. I was not. I was not doing that. I was throwing eggs and doing shaving cream. So I, I hope there's a way for kids to vandalize safely. You can't even be against vandalism anymore as long as you just say, well, it's, uh, it's political. Right. Political. So if you're a kid and you're leaving your house with two dozen eggs and your parents go, what are you doing? You turn around to them and say, shut up, you capitalist pig, and shut the door. They can't say shit to you. You're like, oh, what am I doing? Uh, it's a, called a revolution. How about you uh, keep watching How I Met Your Mother, okay? And yes, I will have leftovers. Leave them in the fridge. But I'm going to out, go out now and do revolution with my friends. Be with my friends. So much of this sad, shitty life we all live is social. Once you realize that, you realize that there's, there's no hope in ideas. Everybody wants to just get hugged. There's no hope in ideas, dummy. I'm going out with my friends to burn down the courthouse. I have friends too. <laughs> it's a fucking so. Everybody's a fucking social. These MAGA hot retards. It's just so. Oh, yeah. Ooh, they're driving around in Cadillacs. You know, they're, are you on the team? I'm on the team. We got something to do. So much of this pitiful, miserable experience of life is just finding people to fuck and tolerate you. That's it. This, this is all thing. I remember that. You, you don't get smarter than when you're in eighth grade and you go, I want to throw eggs with the cool kids. You just, everybody wants to throw eggs with the cool kids. You just want to get invited. You want to have value. You want to have worth. Shut up. 
Stop being bigger and better than everything. You just want to shave and cream someone's car with Johnny and Alfred. That's what you want to do. And whatever that version of that is, playing golf and having a 401k, who cares? Right. Same shit. It's all social. We're social creatures. Nobody's really an island. Some people, very few. The majority of us are organisms that need others and validation constantly. And I love Halloween. I've always liked Halloween. I like it because it's about simulated horror. And I think simulated horror is a nice way to get away from actual horror. What actual horror happens from uh, November 1st all the way to October 30th. And then one day everyone goes, let's pretend that we're scared. Let's find things to scare us. Boo. Like haunted houses and scary movies. But the other 364 days are filled with very real, verifiable accounts of nightmarish behavior that by the very grace of God and sheer luck, you don't find yourself embroiled in. It's hard to enjoy movies like Hostel because I, I used to think they were fake. I can't enjoy them anymore as much because I guarantee you there is a place in Bratislava where you can take a drill and go through some Taurus eye. And if there isn't, there should be. Because if there's not, you're leaving a lot of money on the goddamn table. You can't enjoy Texas Chainsaw Massacre anymore. Why? Because now you don't see Leatherface as someone scary. You see him as somebody that runs for the Senate. How can you enjoy a horror film? It's better. Any Jason, Freddy Krueger, these people are all better than the people who run the country. They've all done less killing. They've all done less killing than our leaders. How do you enjoy a horror movie? House of a Thousand Corpses? How nice it would be if there were only a thousand corpses. <laughs> do you know how many of these third world countries would go, you only killed a thousand of us. They'd be dancing in the street with American flags on right now. A thousand corpses is Tuesday morning before you have fucking lunch. How can you enjoy a horror movie now? It's hard. It's difficult. When you know the actual shit that goes on, if Leatherface was around today, he'd be running a, a major Facebook QAnon account that just got shut down. And he'd come out and say they shouldn't have shut me down. And I go, I kind of agree with Leatherface. I think he's got crazy ideas, but I agree with Leatherface. And then he'd mount a campaign for, you know, local Congress or something. Hold your watch up. Look at this watch. Look how nice that watch looks. That is a hot watch. It's black, black and gold. I'll tell you right now, show that watch off. Look at that watch. Put it away now. Now let me create the moment with words. I am partnering with Vincero Watches, and we could not be more excited. Finding a watch that's stylish, bold, and built to last can be a pretty penny. Vincero Watches is changing that. They believe you deserve to look good and feel good no matter your budget. Vincero creates exceptionally crafted watches, and they do it without breaking the bank. The guys on their team sent me some of the watches. Let me tell you, they're stunning. They're offering you 20% off your entire order if you go to VinceroWatches.com slash Tim. I got to be honest. These are beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful timepiece. You can remember the time. where? Look at it. What was the time when the Civil War started? These watches are bold, fine looking. They're a perfect conversation starter. You're sitting at the bar, you see an attractive lady or gentleman, and you go, hey, you know what I like to do? I, I, you know how I like to start a conversation? I go, look at my watch. Look at my watch. Let's do it. We're on a date right now. Okay. I've got a, a Vincero. 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 I go, this is how I would start if we're having a date. Okay. Not a date. We're at a bar. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I'm a virile, red-blooded American male, and you are a beautiful woman. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hey, look at my watch. 
Wow, that's really nice. Where'd it's you- a Vincetto. <laughs> Watch. Look at it. Wow, it's a nice. Do you want to take a photo of it? No, I'm I'm good, I think. This watch is <laughs> stylish and bold, wouldn't you say? I guess, yeah, it's a nice watch, man. It is a nice watch. <laughs> it's a beautiful watch. It's got over 23,000 five-star reviews on their website. <laughs> Go and read for them yourself. What are you, what are you doing in town? Oh, uh there's a conference for Keep a, looking at it. Oh, Please keep looking at it oh, while no, you yeah, speak. You have it. Um, it's a, uh, I'm in a town for a conference. It's a dentist. It's a dentist conference. We're all getting together for the. Do I have to keep looking at the watch? I, I would prefer it. Yes. We're staying at the hotel downtown. We're staying at the Ace. And um, this is making me really uncomfortable that I just have to keep. It's only making you uncomfortable because you don't have a Vincero. I have more watches in my hotel room. Would you like to go and see them? <laughs> yeah. See? Works. <laughs> That's the way she said, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. They're offering free shipping, free returns for 30 days of warranty on your watch for up to two years. That's pretty wild. Stress-free shopping right from home. I'm telling you, go to VinceroWatches.com slash Tim. These are really nice. I love the one that you have. Uh, They are spectacular watches, so get one right now. So go to Vincero Watches, V-I-N-C-E-R-O-W-A-T-C-H-E-S, VinceroWatches.com slash Tim. You get 20% off your order. It is a great gift, not only for yourself, but it is a phenomenal gift for another family member, and we're heading into the holiday season. So do it now. Have the watches now. Don't be scrambling and waiting when we hit December Everybody's going to go crazy. Do it now. Buy it now. It's a great way to get a great watch and support this show. Everybody's starting a business, and they're all online. You can't leave your house. You're not allowed. COVID's skyrocketing. We've got 94,000 cases just today. So the smartest thing for you to do is start an e-commerce business online. How are you going to ship stuff? You don't know what the hell you're doing, you fool. If you did, you would have been done that already, but you didn't. So if you go to ShipStation.com, ShipStation.com is the fastest, easiest, most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In a few clicks, you're managing orders, printing out discounted shipping labels, and getting your products out fast. The result, happier holidays for you and your customers. I don't care what you sell. Junk from the attic. Art that you make in a mental institution. Whatever it is, put it out there and get it sold. You need somebody to handle all the back office. ShipStation.com handles all the back office. You get that? You spend your time being the entrepreneur, the CEO, the creator. ShipStation handles the orders, the tracking. They track the orders. They offer big discounts on shipping costs. Now any business can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. You'll always know that you're getting the best deal. And my favorite thing about this offer is how many months do they get free? They 60 get days. 60 days. Two free months. If you're an entrepreneur, you're starting your business, or even if you've had a business, 60 days of free cost is amazing. And I'm telling you right now, it's very important. It's very important that you do this. You got to start an e-commerce business. Nobody is immune uh, to, to the coming economic collapse. The only people that are going to be okay is if you're making your money online. You got to make it online. You got to ship. So if you go to the Tim Dillon Show, listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you offer the code Tim Dillon, my name, the code Tim Dillon. You go to ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Tim Dillon. That's ShipStation.com and enter the code Tim Dillon. ShipStation makes ship happen. And you can and will. And I'm telling you, this is the best way. I have friends that have e-commerce businesses. Uh, this is the way to do it. What are your favorite scary movies, favorite Halloween movies? Favorite Halloween movie, uh, off the top of my head, Hocus Pocus, because I watched it when I was a kid. Very gay. Hocus Pocus. Now, Ben has a wife, and I I hope she's not in therapy in years from now. Hocus Pocus is a gay, iconic movie. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's very gay. It's it's, uh, Bette Midler and- uh, I'm aware it's gay. Kathy and Jimmy, who is- uh, There's a lot of similarities. Who's brilliant. 
and uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, and it's a very gay, funny movie, and I, I enjoy that too. It's not really a horror movie. Right. Uh, favorite it's horror movie? It's scary. Here's why Hocus Pocus is legitimately scary. Everybody in the movie is white. <laughs> that terrifies me. That they would have such a lack of concern for diverse. Was there one disabled person? Was there one person going through a transition in the film? No, thank you. Was there one Black Panther in the movie? No. <laughs> no. No good. I like a movie called Jacob's Ladder with uh, Tim Robbins and the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Phenomenal film. And Danny Aiello. Great. Someone said, and they were right, they were like, Danny Aiello's face is is on in every pizzeria in Manhattan. If you've ever been in New York, the celebrity, like pizzerias put the celebrities that have eaten there on the wall. Oh. And Danny Aiello is in like more of them than anyone else. This is a... Uh, Oh my God, does he look bad? He looks so, oh Jesus. Is he still alive? Let's see. I like Danny Aiello. No, he died in December 12, 2019. Sad. He's great. Well, anyway. Yeah, Jacob's it, Ladder. Yeah, great. Yeah. And it's about a guy that went to Vietnam. And this is why I like it, because there's a little bit of a backstory. Mm -hmm. It was about a guy that went to Vietnam and the government experimented, very similar to Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. They experimented with this drug called the ladder, which made uh, American servicemen more vicious. And they, they, in the movie, they explained that we were, we were not convinced that we could win Vietnam because our boys were soft. We needed them to be more vicious. So we needed to unlock the real nightmares inside of them and they, they all took this drug called The Ladder. It, it's a cool movie, and many of you may enjoy it. And then I think at the end, Danny Aiello's like, there's, there's this great quote in it that I like. Danny Aiello, demons quote. Jacob's Ladder, demons quote. Demons and angels quote. It's kind of a fun little quote. Demons are really angels. Yeah, that's the quote. This is a fun movie, by the way. Many couples, I see many couples come out to the shows, and I like that. I like that. Uh, my fan base is pr primarily heterosexual, but at least many of them are coupled up. It's good to do something every night and not have one person that potentially will like me ever. So I enjoy that. It's nice. You know, straight guys do comedy. People message them, hey, it was great. You want to have a drink? You know what I mean? People message me, hey, look at this pizza menu in Omaha. Do you think the S is really a... Jacob Black... So this is a quote I like. If you're afraid of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the world. It all depends on how you look at it. But Danny Aiello does the quote. So Danny Aiello's like, if you made your peace, the devils are really angels free you from the world. He's got a garlic knot falling out of his mouth. It all depends on how you look at it. You see? I enjoy that film. I like a lot of the Rob Zombie movies, Devil's Rejects, which is a movie about comedians. I'm kidding. House of a Thousand Corpses. So, by the way, after I did the Rogan episode, I you know how much I love and, and value journalists because they write about our world. And it's so important. And... Many of the, a few articles are written about me. Who's this Tim Dill? He says he sold subprime mortgages and his mother's a schizophrenic. It's like the the level of research they do is like nothing. It's like, yeah, that's in a five minute set you can find online. Well done. Um, and so, and then some of them are like, he's made controversial comments. And by the way, these aren't journalists. Let me correct myself. There's like seven journalists in America that's why everyone's like, Trump hates journalists. There are no journalists. They don't exist. They're not real. They're like Santa Claus. They're not a thing, okay? There's a few of them, very few of them, who actually cultivate sources, break story. They do not happen. The majority of these people are stenographers. They write things, they hear, they hear, nah, 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 and then they type it, and they write listicles and BuzzFeed. One of them was like, the top 10 craziest things you hear from the Rogan Alex Jones, blah, 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 blah. This is not journalism. It is something else entirely. Um, and then, of course, there are, and this is very, very funny, 
people who put the words comedy and journalist in one job title. I'm a comedy journalist. My beat is people that make sillies. I write about them. And some of these people, like, they'll be like, Tim Dillon's made controversial statements about the Kenosha shooting, the Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, the, and, none of, and then I read what's supposedly controversial, and it's like, Tim Dillon said there was looting and riot. And it's like, no, objective reality has said that. I have repeated it because I have ears and eyes and senses and I don't go at it with like the need to slant. I just go, I'm watching TV. I'm watching things burn. I'm watching people throw things through windows. What would I call that if I had to describe? And whatever, it is what it is, fine. What I, fucking, I'm not saying people shouldn't be pissed. I get it, you know? But this idea that, like, I, uh, oh, it's okay, he's made some controversy. And the controversial statement I saw was that the, the, the Rittenhouse guy was being chased. He was being chased. I think somebody, and, and I, somebody had a gun or whatever. Like, and again, I saw the video. I saw the video, and I said what I saw on the video. Mm. And then they take all these things out of context that are very, very funny. I made some very funny statements about that. Very, very funny about the family, you know, the Rittenhouses. Mm. I said they're a bit off. And they're like, he said they're a bit, like, it's, 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 it's clearly humor, and these people don't have a sense of humor. All these tech journalists, these tech journalists, these women, or not, not women, sorry, 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 these entities with, you know, green hair and a USB port for a clit are, <laughs> are you know, or, or, or these miserable people. They're miserable. They're unhappy. They're unhappy, and it's my fault. It's my fault you're miserable. And they were, and then I look in Twitter and many of them have blocked me. They've already blocked me. And I'm like, what, what? What did I do? What did I do? Did I shoot anyone? Did I go to the protest with the gun with my mother? I don't see my family during good times. I didn't grab my family and say, let's all get in a van, go to the protest. I'm commentating on it. Tim Dillon, get it up here. Get up, Google me and see, let's get this article up. It's, it's absurd. Tim Dillon made uh, Duke, Google Tim Dillon Kenosha. How great is, how fun has my life <laughs> oh, become? <clears throat> yeah. Go to, me, what is this? Meow? Is this Meow? The one? I guess this is the one. Joe Rogan puts Alex Jones, Tim Dillon on his podcast, Internet Angry. He featured anti vaxxer during pandemic. Keep going down. And then. Yeah, and then they, but who is Tim Dillon? He hosts a podcast called Tim Dillon's Going to Hell. That has not been the name of the podcast for years. Some of his comments during the Black Lives Matter protests have received sharp criticism. From who? Case in point, in the aftermath of the shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin in late August, commenting on armed civilians, Dillon had said, quote, when the police are defunded to abolish, this will be the scene in many major cities, militias fighting each other on the street. Well, what do you think the scene will be? Compliance? Do you think everybody, I mean, what, I mean, how dumb are these people? So keep going down. Then they find a tweet where I say a logical, rational thing. So with these two guests on board, it is only likely that people will criticize Rogan's decision to host them. One Twitter user said, WTF is wrong with him. Ugh. There was a time years ago when his podcast had some interesting thought-provoking episodes. Now it's just crazy town. Oh, it wasn't thought-provoking? Aren't you having thoughts right now? <laughs> Aren't you having thoughts? It's not thought-provoking? You went on Twitter and started writing about it. Apparently you were provoked and you were having thoughts. Come on. It's, there's, a, there's, there, there's a children in the country. They, I mean, we don't deserve a government or, or future. And, we, and here's the good news. We probably won't have one. Um, it's, it's childish. We can officially count his show among the most dangerous propaganda outlets in the country. By the way, guarantee that person has a podcast that's not doing well. Anyone that's really mad at this, let's, let's really unpack the problem. <laughs> By the way, 
all of these people are, are have been told, here's it. Let's break this down for a minute. You know, I never talk about comedy, but let me get in here for a minute. <laughs> let me get in here for a minute. Comedy is a haven for the mentally ill. There is actually very little comedy. The majority of comedy and comedians are, are mentally ill people. They're sick, including me. The difference is that I'm funny. You see, if I was sick and not funny, I'd be angry. Because they'd be like, well, I'm sick and I'm not funny. Like, I have these obsessions and I'm crazy and everybody knows and blah, 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 blah and, and I talk about all this shit and, and it's funny and I find a way to make it funny and that's how I survive on this planet, right? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have the converter, if I wasn't able to make it funny, a la many of the people I know, I would be in trouble. And many of these people are in trouble. And then I would look at funny people and look at successful people and I'd be in a blind rage, which is where these people live. They've wasted their entire life. I hate using a hack example. I hate using a hack example. And I'm going to use a dumb hack example again that I've used a million times. But if I showed up every day to Ford Modeling Agency, someone there would have to sit me down and go, explain to us why you think this is going to work. Explain to us what you're seeing in the world that makes you think that we want a blotchy, overweight Irishman in any of our ads. We want Mediterranean muscle, baby. Black, white, whatever. Don't care. Why do you think this is going to work? Nowhere in our, in our, do we want redness, occasional redness, unexplained redness. I don't even know why it happens. I just get red in parts of my body. My skin, my emotions bleed out of my skin. These people are going to Ford Modeling. And I don't even know who this is. And I'm sure they're not a horrible person. And whatever. I don't care. This is not like beefs and feuds. It doesn't matter to me. Maybe they are funny. No. But <laughs> let's not leave this up. I don't want to fucking look at this fucking article. Let's like get something fun up like a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> but the whole thing here is... Be very, 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 be very honest here. Is a little bit of the anger, jealousy, that Joe has done something that none of these people were able to do. These people think they're intelligent and they're smart and, and they're too good to have the biggest podcast in the world. They're too smart. They're too smart to have the biggest podcast in the world. What a take. They're too good for success. Me and Mullen used to talk about that all the time. People are too good to succeed. They're too funny to perform in front of other people. They're too good. So the rage that these people live with all, all the time, they're just angry. They're just very, very angry that they've dedicated their life to something that hasn't worked out. And here's the question. Here's the question. Who told you to do that? Who told you that that was a good idea? I bet no one did. No, when you go to Thanksgiving and you go, I'm a comedian, your family goes, thanks, great. Peel the potato. No one cares. Imagine going to your family going, I'm a comedy journalist. Yeah. This is a million people who want to be Chapel Trap House. You're not. They are very, very funny. They're hilarious. Whatever you think about their shit, and they talk shit about everybody, but they're very funny. You know, I, I don't even know who they are, but whatever. They, Mullen live with one of them, the, the skinny woman with the cat. I, I think they're good. I They're funny. And then there's 90 million other people. And then the red people are funny too. Red, uh, the, 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 the communist pussy. I don't know. Whatever oh, red, that show oh, yeah, is. Red scare. They're good yeah, yeah. too. They're funny, right? Some of them. I don't know. But occasionally I've heard things like, oh, I like it. Uh, uh, whatever. I don't mind. I don't mind a little Marxism, baby. But then there's 90 million fucking people that aren't funny that are just angry because things are unfair. Mm -hmm. that, um, oh, yes, things are not good. Did I, do I come out here every week and go, it's, it's getting better? And uh, it's, What am I, Ben Shapiro? Well, actually, folks, it's actually not as bad as you think. No, I think I'm pretty honest about how fucked we are. And if you think that the reason we're fucked is Alex Jones, man, are you out to fucking lunch? How lucky would we be? How lucky would we be if the biggest problem in this country was some so a, a conspiracy guy in Texas? That's crazy. The problems are so institutional, so deep-rooted, that this selective rage in a successful podcast, having a guy on, a broadcaster, and then fact-checking him in real fucking time... <laughs> 
I mean, that's crazy that you would get so angry about that. But it's it's really about just the Rick, because they never were cool. They just want to be cool. They just want to throw eggs with Johnny and Alfred. Well, I don't know who they are. Johnny came to see me in West Palm Beach, by the way. Really? Thank you for coming. I didn't let him in the green room because of COVID. <laughs> I love that now because of COVID. I go, no one can come in the green room because of COVID. The manager can't talk to me because of COVID. Uh, I, uh, my fi- No, I don't have a next of kin, COVID. Go to the doctor that you got to fill out that next of kin. I just write COVID. They're all dead. Ridge Wallet. Yum. yum. Ridge Wallet is a wallet, and it is metal, and you sanitize it easily, and it is 30,000 five-star reviews. They have partnered with this show for a long time. Ridge Wallet is a phenomenal product. It is sleek. It is sharp. You put it in your front pocket. Nobody knows you have it. Nobody's going to rob you. They don't see a big bulging thing. If they want to see a bulge, you know what I'm talking about. It's not going to be your wallet. It's going to be your hog. Ridge Wallet is a spectacular way to pare down a lot of the unnecessary shit you keep in your wallet all the time. I'm telling you, I don't know how else to advertise this wallet. I, I, I don't know. I'll tell you a story that might drive home the fact. A friend of mine thought about getting a Ridge Wallet. Mm-hmm. He thought about it. He thought long and hard. He decided not to get it. And you know what happened to him? What? Why are you asking like that? You're asking like you're not really interested. No, I am. I'm very You're interested. asking a lot. You're asking a lot. You're asking like you're not interested in what happened to my friend when he made the tragic mistake of, of not getting a rich wallet. Do you know what happened? What happened to him? His children. And this is in the news. You can look it up. His own children. Killed him. <laughs> Do you know how old they were? How old? Two and four. And they killed their father. Mm. You know how they did it? Yeah. They lit him on fire while he slept. <laughs> and you know what they said when they were asked why they did it? What? He didn't get a Ridge wallet. And you know what? The state did not press charges. And the wife said, I will get another father who's smarter. She didn't care. Even as the smell of his burnt corpse was in her nostrils, she said he should have made a better decision. Mm -hmm. If you like my show, if you like podcasting, if you like comedy, if you like wallets, if you like other people and want to give them gifts, if you want to do this as a bit, if you want to play a practical joke and get these wallets, all I want you to do is go to ridge.com slash Tim, T-I-M, ridge.com slash Tim, and use the code Tim. The link is in the description. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. When you, when you support the products, you support the program. And we really, truly appreciate that. Thank you very much. I love Raycon. I lost my earbuds the other day, and I said, am I going to pay $300 for new Apple iPod Air Potty Papupa? No. What do they call them? Earbuds, earpods, pod... Airpods. Airpods. Hey, fuck you. Raycon is the best. Six hours of playtime. Seamless Bluetooth pairing. More bass. More compact design. A noise-isolating fit. They're used by people like Snoop Dogg, Melissa Etheridge, Brandy, Mike Tyson, Rich the Kid. Okay. Raycon has a 45-day... Free return policy, but nobody cares. Nobody use. Nobody does it because they love them. This is a from a syringe from a video that's coming out. It's in my pocket. There's syringes all over the house. Ben had to go into a store and get a bunch of syringes, and they're like looking at him like what? And then Ben had to go. Listen, I'm not a diabetic. I'm doing a sketch. Mm-hmm. How many did you buy? Ten. If I walked in to get ten syringes, they go. How about thirty? <laughs> 10 can't be enough. How about 30? People just start injecting me in the store. Raycon is the best. I mean, these ear, these are great uh, headphones. Mm. Am I wrong? Amazing. So much better than the AirPods. I I agree. Hey, 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 hey. I agree. Yeah. They're wireless. Mm -hmm. 
They're cool. People go, hey, let's do a, a conversation. You're an attractive woman. I'm a guy. And and I go, you go what, what are those? Are those uh, AirPods? Oh, my God. Can I ask you, what are those? Are those AirPods? Um, They're Raycon, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Why did you think they were AirPods? They're black. They're a different color. Okay, I'm sorry. I just... I just saw they were white. They were just sticking out. I thought it was AirPods or something. I don't know. Yeah. Why don't you start paying attention to your surroundings before you get thrown in a van? Oh, God. You understand that? Oh, my God. But the greatest thing about these things, they don't cost a lot of money. You get the same thing. It's the same thing. You're spending more money for what? You, you know? They're premium wireless earbuds. You can get them less than half the price of AirPods. For limited time, get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Tim. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim for 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash Tim. But did, did, did everybody wants to throw eggs. Everybody wants to, to put shaving cream on the car. That's what it is. People aren't thinkers. These people aren't actualized human beings. They want a hug. They want someone to go, you're, you matter. Mm -hmm. You're valid. You, you, you're, you're, you should be here. And I mean on earth. Hey, you should be here on this planet. That's all these people are trying to do. And don't think anything of it. You think Alex Jones is changing minds on the Joe Rogan experience? You think my aunt, who's a hardcore Biden voter, is going to go, well, you know, Alex made a good point about interdimensional uh, lizards, so I think I'm going to go in there and vote red. No. This whole thing of people influencing each other, it's like there's such a small sliver of people that can even be influenced, mm -hmm. you know? And Alex is more is a complex guy, smart guy, made some mistakes, very clear, but... This whole blind rage that everybody flies into every time Joe has a conversation with people they don't like is, is uh, embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for a lot of these people. I'm like, why have you not, like, figured out that you're the entire problem, the entire reason? You know, the Red Scare had Steve Bannon on. People went nuts. They got yeah, mad. Yeah, they yeah. got angry. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? You're having a conversation. What's dangerous about having a conversation? I don't understand. It's, but it goes back to just social. I get, you know, I get, I get. It's, it's, you learn all those lessons young. If you pay attention, you learn all those lessons young. You, people just want to be uh, accepted. They want to accept each other. They just want to be, they, and, and all these people just want to be a revolution. They just want to, it's, it's got to matter, right? It's got to matter. Can't all be shitty job interviews in Panera. Let me throw a brick through the fucking Louis Vuitton and let's do a little revolution. I'm bored. Can't all be broccoli and cheese soup on the way to some hell. I want a revolution. I want to. I want. I want to live in historic times. I want to do something. Well, then do something. Do something actually something. And I'm not saying you know don't fucking. I know they'll come for this show. And, but you know what I'm saying? Like create something. Help people. Help someone. And don't do that. Go go ask any of these people if they volunteer their soup kitchen. They'll look you like uh you you have ten heads. You know, I know people that go, I know LA comedians that go to like a help the homeless workshop. They all see each other and then they never help the homeless. What is a help the homeless workshop, by the way? Can know. anyone explain to me what that even is? Some fucking hipster in Echo Park being like, what we really should do is be working. Can you imagine some homeless guy who's like mentally ill, who's done three tours in Iraq. He unzips a... He unzips uh, his tent and like Brandon Wardell's there with a clipboard like, hey, man, can you get and I love Brandon, but you know what I mean? Like what? What? <laughs> is that the solution? What are we talking about? Paul F. Tompkins is going to walk around under bridges and help the homeless. Can we get real? Amy Mann's going to be there with a the guitar. Sorry, you're homeless. Sorry, you're homeless. Doesn't it suck? I, I'm, and I'm at fault. Somehow I'm at fault. And I like Brandon. Brandon. What's his name? Brandon. 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 Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding with him. I know. I, I like him. I like them all. I have no problems with anyone. People don't like me. 
Huh? What's that? Odd. Very strange. <laughs> I don't understand. Have I said things in the past that would lead people to uh, dislike me? Probably. Probably. Have I been wrong? No. That should matter. Shouldn't that matter? I said Sanders was a good idea. People got mad at me for that. I think healthcare is like my mother is a mental institution uh, that's run by the state. You want to talk about a horror movie, and they still can't find a way to kill her. Um, and we're, and it's, we're paying good money. <laughs> Christ Almighty. If we lose this COVID window to get rid of this bitch, we'll never do it. She'll live forever. I think it's a great idea. If my aunt wasn't a saint and didn't work her ass off getting my mother into that hospital, there would be, my mother might be homeless, okay? That is why I said Sanders was good because I believe that people that are mentally ill, especially those of people that have served the country or whatever, should not be allowed to die in the streets. That is what I believe. That position is apparently alt-right. <laughs> I don't, know what to, I don't even know what to tell you. I was willing to vote for Bernie Sanders. Mm. I'm not voting this time because I don't know how to vote. I don't have a voting plan. My business manager called me and goes, should, you, should we register you in California? I said, will you leave me alone? Go vote. It looks gross. Have you seen it? Have you seen these people voting? They look sad and desperate. I don't want to go to libraries and, and, and firehouses. <laughs> Let's go to dinner. If my friend called me and said, well, are we going to go vote? I said, why don't we just go to dinner? I think me and my friends went to vote once. And we just went to dinner. <laughs> really? Yeah. Who cares? The line's too long. I got us a table. Let's go have a few laughs. We're all dead tomorrow. We're dead now. Here's the funny thing. We're dead now. <laughs> 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 I mean, California's not a swing state. I don't want to vote for Trump, and I don't want to vote for Joe Biden and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Calamari Harris. I don't want to be involved in, in any of that. So what, they could start a war with North Korea and Russia in, in five months to prove a point, and nothing could get any fucking better? Or we're going to vote for Trump again, who's now talking about Jesus because he knows it's almost over. Did you see that clip today, the Trump-Jesus clip? Pull that up. Okay. This is a guy, the only time he's been in a church is when he got married fucking nine times. Here we go. I mean, it's a tricky thing. It's, uh, it's dust. It's a little tricky thing. Masks, no masks, everything. You can do all you want. But, you know, you still need help from the boss. You need help from the boss. That's what happened. We need help. <laughs> I love him. And you got to love him. What a con. What a, pause it for yeah, a minute. Need- what a con. I mean, forever in all things. And I can't. There's a soft spot in my heart for a huckster. There's a soft spot in my heart for a con. He's standing there. He's at the end. And he might be losing and he might not be. But he's just like... The great con is always the first con, and it's Christ. It's God. It's Jesus. It's the, it's with the, all good con artists go back to that first con at the end. They all go to Jesus at the end, and that's the truly poetic thing about Trump here is you are watching somebody at the end of a long con that has been more successful than any other. It makes Enron look like nothing. I mean, this is truly... A, a thing to watch, and let's watch this. You know, it's all right to say. Now, they'll criticize me for that. How dare he say that? How dare he say that? No, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Somebody said to me the other day, you're the most famous person in the world by far. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I said, no. He said, who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it feels like it's almost over. It kind of does. I'm not taking any chances. I'm not going to have an argument. Hey, I'm not having any arguments. Jesus Christ. 
I'm not going to take any chances. I'll give it, I guarantee. And let me look up and I'll say, and it's not even close. <laughs> if he goes down, and he will, maybe. I mean, that's what the numbers say. But he also may not, right? Uh, if he, he will be the funnest post-president. He'll have the funnest post-presidency. They'll have him on all the shows. They'll have him on all the chat shows. Hollywood will embrace him. They'll all embrace him. They'll all embrace him because they just want to win. They want to win at a small game, a petty game. And as soon as he's gone, they'll they'll do what they did with George W. Bush. It might take a while. He might die before it can fully happen. But it, if he's still around, and he might be, he's figured out something that works. McChickens and Adderalls. I don't know what he does, but it's fine. He figures it out. Um, they'll all have him on. He'll go on. He'll goof around. He'll be funny. He'll go back to being a celebrity. He'll go back to being uh, Hollywood. And, uh, and everybody will just be okay with it. Everybody will be okay with it because they don't really care. They don't really care. Um, and it'll just be, it'll be fun to see, right? Because they, they, they will have then done it. They will have gone and thrown eggs with Johnny and Alfred on Halloween night, and they will have gotten it out of their system. They will have gotten it out of their system. They said, we shave and cream the cars, and we threw all the eggs, and all the popular kids hung out. We all roamed together, and we all roamed together in one pack, and nobody stood out too much, and it was just fun. It was just fun because for a, for a moment I felt like it, I, I mattered and, and, I, and I, I did the thing that I came to do, right? And there's all these people, when he, when he loses, if he loses, that's what uh, will happen, I believe. I believe that the hysteria will calm down. Um, I believe that, you know, or it may not. It may intensify and increase. I mean, we are, you know, who the fuck knows what will happen, but... When you see him there and he's in his element, he's with these people, he's so funny, he's so on his game. Um, you know, he he doesn't care. That's what a great con doesn't get invested, you dummies. So he cares about, there are things he cares about, I'm sure. But a great con like he is, you know, like a guy who truly is, you know, a, a craven narcissist, a megalomaniac, uh, you know, He's up there, and he's basically saying, it's me and Christ. That's what that whole thing is. He goes, it's me. And that should almost be the last thing he says. It's the perfect coda to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one guy bigger than me, and it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to take any chances. There's one guy bigger than me. Because in he's right. He's not wrong to his people. And at this moment, and at this moment in history, he is the biggest other than Jesus. You did it. Donald, you did it. You threw all the eggs. You shaved and creamed all the cars. There's nothing left to do. There's nothing left to do. You did it. You made all of the fucking deals that you didn't make, and who cares anyway? You know? Mm -hmm. You made the big deal, which is the deal with your people, your followers, your fans, your rock star. You're a rock star. The second term will barely be fun. You're not going to get anything done. That God only knows. You did it. You you had kind of the rock star presidency. You can always blame the economy. And you wouldn't be wrong to say the economy crashed because of COVID. Say, I was rocking out and then COVID came and fuck, man. Yeah, the second album never happened. But that first album, man, that was a good one. That first album was the Billy Joel, The Stranger, or whatever, in the 70s, or whatever. You know, that was the big one. That was, you know, that was the one that we, we're still playing the hits. Billy Joel's still playing the hits, isn't he? He's still playing those hits. And Donald, you can, you can still go play the hits. You can still do the rallies. You can still have the fun. You can still be this massive force. And, and, and if this is, this may be, do we have another one coming out before the election? Mm, no. Well, Patreon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Patreon. A Patreon. We'll join that um but this may be the last episode where donald trump is president yeah yeah and i will say this as someone who who is always who knows what he is and is no uh, i have no uh, i understand what he's doing so i'm not taking in like many of you into this emotional spiral many of you will spiral when biden wins i will wake up and go all right 
uh, and vice versa. But many of you will spiral because you are children, and we've talked about this many times, and yet telling you children does not get you to not act like them. Um, and it, cause it's shit. That's what should, like, if you turn around and go, you're a child, what does a kid do? Do they start there? They straighten up and go, you're right. Now they go, ah, does it work? I've tried. Um, but I will say this, this man emerged in 2016. Um, he's done some very bad things, some good ones, some that, and a lot of nothing. He's also somehow a lot of nothing, like nothing. Right. Um, but I will say this. It has driven the people in my business to the brink of insanity and then some. It has driven those people uh, insane. It has rendered them ineffective and useless. And it has paved the way for people like me and, and the other people that I mentioned in the show, the Chapos and the whoever's of the world, to really fucking look at our business for what it is, which was also a con for many for a very long time. And one con exposed another con. And if Donald Trump has done nothing else but destroy the facade of Hollywood, and he does nothing else other than that, and to pull the cover back on, on the corporate media and Hollywood, then hey... You did it. You did something. You know? You truly did something. Because they don't matter anymore, these people. They don't matter. No one cares. I live here. I know that no one cares. And if that's the only thing that Trump was able to accomplish, you know, and he asked the kids in the cages, Obama had him there, he didn't care then, he care now. It was bad when he did it, bad when Trump did it, bad, bad, bad. Get an immigration policy. Can't let everybody in. Depress his wages. It's again, we're past this. We're past this. We all know you don't care. You don't care what the facts are. Doesn't matter. On both sides, you don't care what the facts. Are. Nobody cares. Right. So well, what am I going to do with the data? We're going to put the graph up. <laughs> what are we going to do? We we know this. Immigration shouldn't be an emotional issue. Do we need more immigrants? Do we not? What's unemployment look like? What's inequality look like? What do do people have health care? Do they have anything? Should we be importing low-wage labor, unskilled labor at this moment, right now? More of it, less of it. It's a gradient. It's, you know, but whatever. Nobody cares. I'm not going to care. AOC is a vanity fair. Man, stop it. She's throwing eggs. Don't want to throw eggs. So, but I will say that's the enduring legacy of Trump to me. The enduring legacy of uh, uh, Trump to me is it took a guy from Hollywood to break everybody's minds. Because he used their system against them. He weaponized the structures that they had created. The obsession with celebrity, the narcissism, the vulgarity, the vanity, the ugliness. He turned it on its head. He made it cool. He wanted to be the president and he found a way to do it using Twitter from his toilet. He took your value system and ran with it. He became the best version of you. He took all of the things that you believed in, that you worshipped, and that you idolized, and he used them to defeat you. He didn't do it with knowledge. He didn't do it with hard work. He didn't do it with, you know, faith. He didn't do it with competence. He did it with vanity, vulgarity, narcissism. He did it with cheap horseshit. And he took it and he sold it back to you. Right? Yes or yes. That's what happened. So don't be mad. Benjamin Franklin once said, don't hate the player, hate the game. And there's a lot of people in this country that think that the only problems are the players. It's just the players. It's just that conspiracy theorist we don't like on Rogan. It's just that game show host who became president. 
But it is the game a little bit, isn't it? And it's it's all of us. It's just all of us, right? It's it's kind of the folly of humanity at the end of the day. It's why I like Halloween. I like Halloween because it makes people pretend for a day that all of the horrors are fake and that we can control them. We have power on Halloween. We dress up and we decide what haunted house to go to. And we like to get scared and spooked in a controlled environment. And we like to have fun on Halloween. It's why I've always liked Halloween. It's simulating something that really terrifies us down deep. It's a simulation of something. And when Donald Trump took office in 2016, the simulation won. Good night. <laughs>